Building a business does not need to be violent. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. And it does require you to know yourself and you to have a very clear a vision of the life you want to live and the business that you want to have while giving yourself the grace to change your mind and to pivot. But you can have a soft life. I think honestly, soft life is a strategic life. Soft life is about being strategic. It's being strategic about your time, your resources, the things you feed, the things you breathe life into, the things that you don't, and how you take care of yourself during that process. Hey everyone, welcome to Flourish in the Foreign, an award-winning podcast that elevates, celebrates, and affirms the voices and stories of Black women living and thriving abroad. I am your host, Christine Job, a Black American woman that is originally from Atlanta, but currently resides in Valencia, Spain. I am not only a podcaster, but I'm also a business strategist who helps Black women and women of color leverage their talents and their gifts into viable and sustainable online businesses, businesses that make them professionally fulfilled, financially abundant, while pursuing thriving lives abroad. It is that time, everyone. Build a Business Abroad group coaching is launching its final cohort of 2022. If you are interested in joining the cohort, I highly suggest you click the link and learn more about the group coaching program. I definitely want you to consider joining the Build a Business Abroad cohort. It is time for you to bet on yourself. It is time for you to take your brilliance, your expertise, your experience, and really build and invest in yourself and build something that can be an asset for yourself, for your legacy, or whatever you want. This award-winning podcast is a labor of love, but labor nonetheless. So I ask all of you to please support this here podcast if you like it, if you love it. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash flourish foreign. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to this podcast and you have written a review for this podcast on any of the platforms that you may be listening on. So be it Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever, please rate the podcast five stars and leave me a review. And of course, please do continue sharing the podcast with your friends, your family, your associates, the colleagues that you like, whomever, please share this podcast with them because that is how this podcast grows. All right, on to the next episode. So today's episode is a continuation on our conversation about soft life, but specifically with soft life and building a business. And, you know, I really like this topic a lot. I think that I've been living a soft life and I've had a soft life mentality <laughs> for a really long time. And so it's nice that, you know, everybody's catching up. No, but it's something that I really do uh, preach, teach and embody in my methodology of business development. It has always been about soft life. Yeah, it has always been about soft life. Check my testimonials on my website, christinechobe.com. It is always about leveraging skills and talents. And I've always stressed building a business around your lifestyle, how much you want to work, how much you want to get paid. So this episode is another IG live of me talking specifically about building a business abroad and utilizing soft life as a foundation for building that business. I, I really enjoyed this. I enjoy this conversation. I know the people that were on live, they said they enjoyed it too. I hope you enjoy as well. But I'm going to let myself tell you all about it. Soft life, just an aesthetic? No, it's a way to build a business abroad. Hey everyone, I'm Christine, the host and creator of Flourish in the Foreign, and also 
the coach and strategist for Build a Business Abroad. Today, we're talking about building a business abroad and soft life. I've been thinking about this. I'm actually writing uh, writing about this. It's going to be published in a couple weeks. But, you know, there's like this whole thing happening. I don't know, a movement? I don't know, aesthetic? Called soft life. And it basically just looks like good lighting. I don't know. It's good lighting and like soft features and and great pictures, but also it's women, particularly black women, maybe they're enjoying some luxury or what have you. And I think that's great, but I don't think it's only an aesthetic. I think it's, it's important to embody this. This is a lifestyle. And a lot of people don't recognize that before it was called soft life, a lot of people were living a soft life. Case in point, me. I, I moved to Spain to, I guess, live a soft life. I guess that's where I live now and build a business with like the same tenets, I suppose, of soft life. And you can do that as well. You can build a business abroad or at home with the same tenets of soft life as I recognize them to be. And you can also build a business to support your soft life abroad. And that's what we're talking about today. I'm excited about it. I'm gonna just tell you what my definition of soft life which you're going to say, oh, it sounds familiar if you listen to the podcast. Because to me, living a soft life is living a life well lived on your own terms. And that is always going to encompass a deep wellness and a wellness that is way beyond face masks <laughs> and great lighting. It's financial wellness. It's professional wellness. It is emotional, mental wellness. It is physical wellness on your own terms. That is what a soft life is. When I say go abroad and cultivate a life well lived, that's what I'm talking about, is living a life on your own terms. But if you listen to the podcast, you know that to do that, to cultivate a life well lived, let alone have a soft life, you have to deeply know yourself. Period. This is not an aesthetic. Like if you want to keep it as an aesthetic, that's fine. But to actually embody this in your life and to have it uh, do something for you, you have to know what that means for you. You have to identify it. That's why I have the Moving Around with Intention Guide. It's an over 40 page guide that discusses and helps you go through what's working in your life and what's not. So you can identify what the tenets would be for you for a soft life. And if you have to build up a sobriety guide, it helps you to identify your skills and your expertise that you are already amazing at and what things you need to leverage to be able to go abroad and have a soft life because you can have a business and have a soft life. I know it sounds crazy, especially if you're coming from American capitalism, but actually the more that I, I think about it, I write about it and I live my life, the more that I recognize that I do live a life and I build a business based on having a soft life. I can take a break whenever I feel like it in my business, uh, which is great for when personal things go haywire like earlier this year and i'm like i gotta take a break it's when things are going great and i have all the opportunities and i can just choose like i just choose what i want to do that's a soft life where you're not necessarily chasing after everything so with a soft life as i said it's really about living a life well lived when it comes to a business though it is about identifying in my opinion, because this is how I run my business, this is who I, I consult with. It's about understanding not only your zone of genius, but understanding the lifestyle that you want to have. I always tell all of my clients, so my clients, if you don't know, I'm a business strategist. I've been a business strategist for over 10 years. I primarily work with women entrepreneurs, women of color, black women, who work in some aspect of wellness. Most of my clients are wellness plus science. <laughs> so they're like therapists that are credentialed that work for very high up organizations. This is not like TikTok wellness. 
at all. These are women who are writing books, who are about to be on television, who are about to help serve all of you in all their amazing ways. That's, that's what I am. I'm a business strategist. I help them to get organized, get clear. I help them to develop products and systems and things like that. And how I do that is that I give them this very long questionnaire that we go through. And really that questionnaire is about what does a life well lived mean to you? What does your business mean to you? And what type of business do you want to have? Now, not really the business model, but really how you want to show up in your business. How do you want to work in your business? The cycles of business. For a lot of my clients, they are already speaking. They get paid to speak. It's paid to do workshops and things like that from top Ivy League universities, Fortune 500 companies, all those things. And they now have to decide what is it they want to do next. And the way they really decide that and how we decide that as a team is I ask them, well, how much do you want to work? And how much money do you want to make? <laughs> how much money do you want to make? And how much do you want to work? And that is the basis of a soft life business. Ladies and gentlemen, when you can identify what is it, how, how you want to work, how long, do you want to work year long? Do you want to take the summers off? Do you want to only work six months out of a year? You might think, how can you do that? You can if you build a business of that cycle. Yes, you can. I mean, there's digital nomads that work uh, the different types of cycles. I know someone that works September, October through February. And she's done. Okay, like, don't tell me, like, come on. It's, it's possible and people are doing it, okay? And then for her, she just travels and hops countries and then she comes back, she goes back to the States and works. But actually, I think now she might've gone totally digital because of the pandemic. So she might just be out here all the time. That's why it's so important to understand what your cycle is. And I think it's important to understand what your personal cycle for business is because too often in these internet streets, these TikTok streets, people are gonna sell you on this and that and all sorts of stuff. But you know, if you're gonna start a business, which is a hassle, similar to moving abroad, you need to make it custom fit. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we doing, like, it's not a one size fits all. What works for you, what you like to do, may not be working for me. Y'all barely see me in these social media streets. I'm gonna get better. I am getting better. I'm claiming it. I've scheduled it. I've created some assets. So <laughs> I'm getting better at it. If you watch TikTok and things like that, you would think like to be successful, you'd need to have a huge Instagram audience or something like that. And you don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm a testament to that. And you know, and honestly, you guys know it. If you've watched any of my IGs about being a content creator, a lot of these people with a large following don't monetize it. They don't know how to, or they don't monetize it in a sustainable manner. Like they don't really make making money off of it. And y'all know, maybe you don't know. As a strategist, if for me, if you're not making money, it's a hobby. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, so if you're a, uh, an influencer hobbyist, great. If you are an influencer and make money, a business person, even better if that's what you want. You can build a life and build a business within soft life. So as I told you before, it's important to be clear. Like with anything, you have to have a clear vision of that business. How often do you want to work and things like that? What's the cycle of your work? What does your work day look like? What is your zone of genius? What do you do? But also you need to know your numbers. And this is something that I think as women, we sometimes have shied away from as women business owners, sometimes, well not sometimes, always, always undervalue themselves, underprice themselves. Um, I'm basically, I'm the type of person's like, if they're not questioning your prices, they're too low. You gotta have people get an attitude with you. <laughs> What? And people do, people get active with me and I'm like, and, and still the price. And you know, the price is going up next time. <laughs> it's important to understand your, your number. If you've gotten the Build a Business Abroad Guide, the number that I'm referring to, is the number that makes your life go round. 
it is the number that you need to take home, not only to cover your expenses, but like if you invest, if you have expenses in the US, if you wanna do this, if you wanna do that, the number that you need to make, as, as in like a, a take home pay, that you pay yourself out in your business, is important for you to know that. Because soft life, in my opinion, is not broke life. I know, this is, this is a new area. So I'm just making up stuff before somebody writes a think piece and tells me, because they have a master's degree, what it is. I'm writing it. I've already written an article about it. I'm telling you guys what soft life is. So when we think about soft life, when we think about living a life well lived, money isn't part of it. You may hate capitalist structure and everything that it kind of stands for, a lot of exploitation, of people, of yourself, things like that, maybe even disconnect. But quite frankly, we still gotta make money until, until we've all agreed not to care about money anymore. And part of soft life is a life of financial wellness. It does not have to be a life of excess to whatever you feel. I know some people, when we say money, people feel, they have a lot of feelings about money. They have a lot of baggage. They don't want to be seen as greedy. They don't want to be seen as bad. And money is not bad. Money is just energy that we utilize to do things, like live and to live a soft life, okay? So you have to know your number. Soft life is only an aesthetic if you just take pictures. It's an embodiment. Living a sumptuous life is living a life in which you get to take care of yourself in the manner that you want to be taken care of. You have a business that supports you in the manner that you'd like to be supported in. That's a soft life. A soft life is being able to work when you want to and not when you don't want to. <laughs> or not work when you really can't. If you are hitting a mental wellness wall and you're not well and you need to take your time off because honestly we're not meant to work all the time and i know there's so many mostly men entrepreneurship gurus who are like you'll sleep when you die grind eat dirt for three years you don't have to do any of that i'm just gonna tell you you don't have to do any of that at all that's the beauty of being a woman i guess and being in like my divine feminine is like, I think about business in a different way and I handle business in a completely different way. I manage my business in a different way and my clients come to me in a different way. I'm not like a hard beat it, kill it, stab it, grind it. No. <laughs> you know what I am? I'm a coax it. You know you wanna come over here. You know you wanna come on the winning team. And they do. <laughs> Soft life in every aspect of my of, of business, of how I, I do what I do, that's a soft life. A soft life is also having the time and space to contemplate and decide if I want to change what I do and not having the anxiety of like, I can't be different, I can't do whatever. And look, I already have anxiety. I deal with it, it's fine. But soft life is a space, it's an embodiment, it's a way of thinking and moving, in my opinion, that's in alignment with longevity, with sustainability, not with burnout. What? And the thing is, is that, which I think is so interesting, is that if you listen to some of these entrepreneurship gurus on the internet, that what they say is that you're gonna be successful if you disconnect from yourself, if you don't take care of yourself, if you put everyone before yourself, um, if you talk mean to yourself, what else? If Like all these things. And I'm like, it sounds like you're gonna be burnt out because you're neglecting yourself. And if you are successful, and whatever you mean, I mean, success at that point is just like, are you successful just because you made a sale? Because I'd be like, buddy, you can make a sale without doing all that, but hey, if you don't want to sleep, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop you. Like, what they're teaching you is that a system of a life in which you perpetuate maybe the same situation that you came out of if you're in corporate or working for somebody else. I thought the whole point of working for yourself is to have freedom, time freedom, creativity, freedom of expression, 
and things like that. And also to take care of yourself. And if something pops off in your family, you can be like, hold on. I gotta do this. <laughs> I gotta go. So soft life. Build this is a brand. What I teach as a business strategist has always been about soft life. It's just nice that the Gen, Gen Zers have brought an aesthetic to it. I'm like, okay. But it's always been about sustainability. And I think that's what's so interesting. I think sometimes with these marketing and things like that, the internet culture, they make, oh, soft life. It's feminine. So it has to be like not serious and whatever. It's like, it's feminine and sustainability. It's feminine, I suppose. And it's all about longevity. But women, we live longer than men anyway. So it's kind of like, you scoff at it, but we be living. We be living. <laughs> it's more about energy. It's about like what people, like clearly feminine energy in whatever way you want to describe it is creative energy, is life-giving energy, is it is sustainable energy, it is the energy for longevity in all aspects of life. So leaning into soft life is not about leaning into like, oh, indulgence and luxury. I mean, if that's what it means to you, go ahead and do that. But it's really about saying my personal mantra, I do what I want. <laughs> I do what I want. I trust my intuition. I trust my noggin. Like I trust my experiences. And I'm gonna go ahead and trust like my feminine that this this pops everything off. This is longevity. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. Okay? That's what soft life is. Now, does soft life in business mean that <sighs> like you will not have hard times. Will there be hardness and soft life in business? Well, yes, there will be. You know why? Because there's hard times or difficult times or times of growth in nature. Mother nature, if you will. <laughs> that is true. Part of your evolution as a person, as a business owner, is going to be some tension between who you are and who you want to be, who you are and who people are asking you to be, who you are and who you think you should be. I think having a business and having a business philosophy that embodies longevity, sustainability, soft life, makes those periods in which you are feeling maybe the anxiety or the tension, the resistance, better. If not, just because you've, you've had sleep and you're not eating dirt and, and that you're actually clear about what you want as an individual and not what you think other people should want for you, what they think success is. They think success is being a billionaire and you're like, being success is making $150,000 after tax and living in the Azores. You know what I mean? Like that might just be it for you. You maybe what's amazing for you is selling your business. You're like, I'm going to build this business. I'm going to sell this business. I'm going to be retired. You know, or I'm going to invest in something else. I'm going to become a venture capitalist. Maybe what's going to be great for you is having a business and then you pass it along and it becomes a legacy business. Not everything is supposed to be on the stock exchange. And how about not every company that's on the stock exchange make money? Let's not get into that. Let's not get into all those zombie corporations and things like that. Let's not get into it. Let me know if you resonate. Does this make sense to you? Soft life and business. Is this your business philosophy? Maybe tell me your business philosophy. Or you can even tell me something that you feel confused about with business. Maybe a myth that you heard or maybe something that you feel like resistant to. Like you're like, I know I'm supposed to do this, but I don't want to do this. But I feel like I have to. Tell me about that. Tell me about your business that you're creating. Tell it to me all because today we are talking about soft life and building a business. It's something that I have embodied and I didn't realize it was an aesthetic until I was on TikTok. Cause you know, I'm not, I don't really be in any social media streets like that. And part of me is like, I don't want to, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. But I was on TikTok and I started seeing all these things and I was like, I already lived this life. I didn't know I had a name, okay. <laughs> Soft life. But you know, I don't have those pictures yet though. I need some of those soft life. I need to put some 
Vaseline on my face and get some of that golden hour <laughs> lighting and live that soft life. But I just live it. I live it low key. Oh, I guess social media low key. I just, I just mind my business and do my thing. But tell me about your soft life and business. Tell me about what you, what soft life means to you and what you hope it means about your business because you don't have to grind it, kill it, punch it. Like why so violent? Like why? Aesthetics are cool, but you know what's cooler? Living that life, actually living it. Not just being like, don't I look great with my star? But like, look, I think we were all young without the internet, thank goodness, without the social media. But you get caught up in the looks of things. And I'd rather just live it personally. <laughs> like, <laughs> soft life is, a, is an aesthetic, but how about it's a philosophy? How about it's a business philosophy? How about it's a moving abroad philosophy? All articles coming soon to you, to all of you. There's a lot of people talking about soft life. Is it, is it black or luxury? Hey, I love that for you too. As long as you're not financing your luxury. No, we don't do that. No, no, no. Okay, we're not doing that. An aesthetic, cool. But it's better to just live it for yourself not for the validation of other people. Because the crazy thing is, and I think some of these influencers are seeing, is that people will like those pics, but they don't actually want you to live that life. They don't want you to have a life different from them. They don't want you to not like, you don't have to commute. You don't have to go through traffic. You could take time off your business and attend to your family or just attend to yourself. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear like, I, I take two naps, <laughs> but it's a, I take two naps a day normally, but I have to because I, I'm a new napper. I'm very new to it. And when you start a new habit, you have to like really be on it. But yeah, I nap twice. I, I, actually, I go to sleep whenever I'm sleepy now. This, that's a new thing for me this year and it's great. But like people don't want to hear that. They're like, well, you don't work that hard. But I live a sumptuous life. Isn't that interesting? Hmm, that's not interesting. One curvy chick. I never understood that mentality or sleeping when I'm dead. I think, I'm not gonna, uh, what do I wanna say about it? I think that is a mentality, I think it's a violent mentality. It's a trick, let me just say that, it's a trick. Because quite frankly, let's talk about it. The, pe the most wealthy people in the world don't work that hard. You know why? Because they don't work for their money. You mean, what do you mean they don't want their money? They don't work for their money. They don't work, exchange hours for money. They make money from investments, real estate, gold, gems, businesses, what have you. So this mentality of like, I have to work so hard, that is literally a lie. It's a lie. And it's a lie that serves exploitation and capitalism. It's a lie to have people to work as hard and to be okay with not getting much out of it. There is work when you're building a business before it's an asset that is paying you. And before, it's a, before you can derive some dividends and reinvest your dividends or just take out your dividends and live off your dividends of your business, you are putting in sweat equity. But how you do it does not need to be in a violent or misaligned manner. You can plant the seeds that you want to harvest and tend to the soil and you will, you will reap it. Yes. And that's not just me being woo-woo with you. That's it. Now, there's a couple of things, there's a couple of factors to think about, of course, depending on how much money you want to make, how fast you want to make the money and what you do because you are putting your business, your skills, your products on the marketplace. But the thought that you can't take care of yourself while you're building your asset is not true. It isn't. And this is coming from somebody who is a little bit of a workaholic, but I like what I do. But I do work too much and I, I have a therapist and I stop working and I, I have my boundaries in place. For, it's about longevity. I live a beautiful life. And sometimes I have to take, because all of my work is on my computer, I have to be like, take a walk. Take a walk and I'm like, oh yeah. Oh wait, no, I'm not going to 
I'm gonna go tour around here, go see my friends. They have their own bar over here. I'm like, hey, what are you guys, what are you guys doing? Have relationships, have social groups. I actually just put together this really great women business owners group. It's all foreigners here in Valencia. We have a great time. It's like a monthly kind of thing. We have, all have different types of businesses. It's wonderful because you get, you get like inside knowledge on a new business. You're like, maybe, do I wanna get into real estate? Do I wanna do this? It's great. And then we always have like a great time drinking wine, stuff like that. It's awesome. I understand being an entrepreneur requires sacrifice, but you have to find balance in everything. I think what it is is like in any transformation, in anything that you are you are calling forth into physical form requires you to sacrifice who you used to be to become the next iteration of yourself, to be the person that could receive this thing, this blessing, and be able to manage it and to care for it and be a good steward of it. Life is, a, a, is constantly a cycle of death and rebirth, truly, yeah. And the sacrifice, I think, I mean, we could say it's a sacrifice to work for someone else unhappily. I'm not a person who thinks everybody should be an entrepreneur, but if you're unhappy and if that is not serving you and your highest and best, that's a sacrifice. I mean, even to build your own business and not be sleeping and like, what? You know, if you don't sleep for 24 hours, your chances of like a stroke go up like 70% or something crazy. I was listening to this on a podcast. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, let me make sure I get all my sleep. Two naps, okay? Like, no, I don't, it's not, it's like this. Money is wonderful and money is a means to an end. But I believe, and because I hold this belief, it is true for me that I'm living this life for this experience and not necessarily, definitely not, for the looks of it for other people or just money in general. Like for me, money has a job. <laughs> so I could say, oh, I want to make this this quarter. Not because it's just vibes. It's because I have, I have a job for this money and, and the universe knows I'm a good steward of this money. I'm like, I'm gonna give you a really good job. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a good job. So this is what I'm trying to make. Like, so this money has a job. It has a job that takes care of me and helps me as a person experiencing things that I want to experience, friends and family, initiatives, things that I like to, you know, support. It has a job. And I think that's a different way of thinking about it. That's what's so great about living abroad. You're like, people are just like, what are you even talking about? To the point where sometimes it's like, I'll talk to my friends, even other business owners, and I'll be like, oh yeah, this week I was like working this much. Like if I was like kind of went overboard in a week. And they look at me like I said, like the sky is green. They're like, what is wrong with you? No. And the same thing with napping. I live in Spain. I live in Valencia now. They, everything shuts down for siesta. I mean, some things don't, it's like the chain grocery stores, but everything else, like the optometrist shuts down. Like the small green grocer shuts down. Like bakeries shut down. Everybody goes home. Do they nap? I don't know, but they have that kind of ritual of self care, of family care that I think is I mean, I, I don't know why it took me so long to get here, but I'm glad I'm here. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. You can't take me back. I'm napping and I love it. The crazy thing too is I used to think like, if I nap, I'm gonna sleep the whole day. If I nap, I'm gonna wake up gr grumpy. I don't. I be in like some deep sleep for like 15, 20 minutes. And I'd be like, oh my God, it must be four hours. It's 20 minutes. I'm like, and I feel amazing. I'm like, and I now, I feel like I'm one of those people, you know, when, when people discover something new and they tell everyone about it, I feel like I want to do that. I want to make TikToks about napping. And people are like, okay, Christine. Like, did you know napping's amazing? <laughs> one of those people, one of those people. I want my money to make money and those money babies make more money. That's, okay, come on. That's soft life. That's soft life. And the thing is, is that when I talk to my clients, and even in Build a Business Abroad, is about thinking about your business as an asset. 
the thing is, is like, especially when we're talking about black women and a lot of women of color, especially in the United States, entrepreneurship isn't new. Being a business owner isn't new because of just historic racism, systemic racism, where certain jobs were not afforded to you, like you just couldn't get a job. So you had to make a job. The only thing is like now it's like we don't want to build a business just for our daily expenses. Of course, it's great to feed yourself, clothe yourself, clothe your baby and stuff like that. But now let's think about a business truly from soft life, a business in which I can plant one seed and reap multiple harvests. Yeah, that's that's the whole point. That's the point of systems and workflows. That's the point of really understanding the money that you want to make, how much you want to work, that combination, thinking about products and services, things like that. And look, it's still something that I experiment with. I've been a business strategist for so long. But coming to content creation is new still. I'd be like, every day I'm like, what am I doing? I don't know. And trying out different products, trying out things that work, some things don't work. You'd be like, that was a fail. <laughs> or things that work, you're like, I don't want to do it. Or I don't want to do it like that. Or I always pull out my cell phone, I do the numbers. I'm like, the numbers, the math ain't mathing. <laughs> the math is not mathing. And if the math don't math, we gotta move on. That's my personal philosophy because I have a vision of my life. And I always tell people, my goal is always not to work every year. Every year, like that's the goal is to think about ways in which I build a business, build a business model mix, so I don't have to work. That's always like the goal. That's, <laughs> I say this all the time. And the thing is, is like, uh, I learned so much by stating it, and I tell people, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I'm like, like, what would you do if you don't work? I'm like, more of what I do now, which is just be lovely. <laughs> and also, I would probably do a lot more mentorship, which I love. I really do love mentorship. I love being a business strategist. I love advising and things like that. Be able to do it for, um, you know, people and different groups at different socioeconomic levels or different situations sitting on a board uh i would love to do that um but you know i have a business to run so when we when we don't have to work every day i can do all these things that's my personal soft life it's not that's not gonna be for everyone and i don't think it should be don't be like well i don't want to work here too maybe you do want to work that's fine but what how do you want to work that's the thing um i don't want to work at all <laughs> I say that, but I would definitely start some type of social enterprise because that's just inside of me. I'm a natural organizer, curator for some reason. I mean, I live in Valencia. I run like three organization uh, already. And I'm like, how did this happen? And I resist it. I'm like, I'm not organizing it. You guys do it. And I just do it. I just love it. I always have thoughts and I'm like, no, we need to do it this way. That's what I would do more of. And maybe more naps. You know, like I will, I will talk to myself and be like, you're sleepy, just lay down. And I'm like, no, it's like I'm a child. I'm literally talking to my inner child. And maybe that's true. Maybe I'm taking care of my inner child. Maybe soft life is taking care of our inner children. Maybe that's what it is. That's part of the healing. And perhaps that's part of the healing of reclaiming your creativity, your labor too, is to heal that child and be like you get to nap whenever you want to you get to play whenever you want to and if you grew up in a situation in which money was hard or strange you get to reteach that inner child what money is and what money ain't and money ain't hard to come by for you kid right perhaps perhaps that is the opportunity but i i do like the thought of soft life in business Hey, I hope that you are enjoying this episode of Flourish in the Foreign. And if you are, please consider supporting the podcast by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash first foreign. Or of course, you can purchase a piece of production equipment via our Amazon wish list, which you can find on the website flourishintheforeign.com. All right.
Let's continue the show. But soft life, in my opinion, is longevity, is living a life on your own terms, unabashedly. And I think I think that's so interesting that when I say live your life on your own terms, or my personal mantra, which is I do what I want, like people have a lot of resistance to that. They're like, you do what you want. Ugh, like you're so, and I'm like, how does that have anything to do with you? It's me, it's me. I do what I want to do. But it's also not, it's not about me, I don't know, being flashy or whatever. It's really about accountability and empowerment because empowerment doesn't come without accountability. So if I'm in a situation that I don't like, I gotta tell myself, well, you do what you want, Christine. And I'll be like, oh, I didn't want this. Well, you do what you want. So mm, examine that if you didn't get the result that you want. But it's also empowering because then I say, you not, you don't like it here? You, you can do what you want. And then I do. And I figure it out. That's what it is. But look, I always say being an entrepreneur is not for everyone. It isn't. You have L's. You have L's people know about you. I think most L's people don't know about because you'd be like, <laughs> no one watched the video or whatever it is. Or it never even got to the masses. You're just like, it just didn't work. But the difference I think between an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur, is that you take the L's. It's not that your feelings aren't hurt or you don't feel bad. You feel like, oh, okay. But you just don't sit there. You take it as information and you pivot. And I think it's so similar to soft life because look, if you are a luxe girl, and you're like, I just gotta have me a Chanel bag. I just gotta have, I gotta have a Chanel bag. And not just a regular Chanel. I want the old school Chanel with the 24 karat gold, not gold plating Chanel, which is crazy. It's like, how do you sell gold plating for more, the bag with gold plating more than the old bag? Anyway, like if that's what I want, then okay, I get it. And if it's not, everything in my dreams you're like oh it's just a purse you have to choose again i think it's similar to entrepreneurship you can uh, attain a goal and it can be not what you thought it was going to be and then you choose again that's the great thing about soft life i think if you approach entrepreneurship from a way of grind and things like that you're trying to make everything work all the time you're trying to you know put a square peg in a round hole and you're gonna make it happen and it's like Maybe just pivot, maybe take the information and move on. Because the thing about it is that there's a lot of ways, when I say a lot, I mean like a billion ways to make money in this world and at least 700 million ways to do it online. (laughs) So the thing is, is like you can find what you want to do and you can learn it, you can do it, you can figure it out. It may take trial and error, but you can make it happen. I think it's all about the mindset at that point. If you think every time something's gonna work out, you're a failure, I don't think you're gonna last as an entrepreneur. And I also don't think that's living a life of softness. Living a life of softness is showing yourself grace and compassion and knowing that you grow best when you extend to yourself grace and compassion and when you extend to yourself understanding. And when you talk to your inner child, like a child and say, not like, you're stupid, you are you didn't do this. Like, were you scared? Is that why you self-sabotaged? Were you unsure? Were you afraid what people were gonna think about you? Did you feel embarrassed? Like doing these types of talks and having that kind of dialogue with yourself is important generally, I think, as an adult. But I think especially as an entrepreneur, because entrepreneurship is a form of self-actualization. I've said it so many times. I've been saying it for years and on the website. It's a form of self-actualization. You become more of yourself through the process of thinking and pulling things out of the ether and bringing them into the physical form, that interaction with other people as you deliver your service. You become clear about who you are as a purpose-driven service provider. Like you learn more and more about who you are and who you're not. And who you're not may not be someone that people want to put as 30 under 30, 40 under 40, 50 under 50. Oh my God, let me tell you. In my 20s, I was obsessed 
with being under somebody's 30 under 30 list. Like, I just thought, like, if I did not end up on someone's 30 under 30 list, I was just gonna, like, have a conniption. And when I turned 30, I think I did. I was just like, you're a failure. And it's, like, so interesting how with time and wisdom and actually living a life that I want, like, I was like, why did you want that? That doesn't bring, I mean, it's cool, but, like, this is cooler. <laughs> so much pressure to put on yourself for for that kind of thing that at the time i don't know if it would have meant much we have to really assess that kind of thing we have so many expectations of ourselves and to me in conclusion soft life and building a business abroad is like cultivating a life well lived. That's what it is. It's, it's understanding what that is and being true to it. It's aligning yourself with it. Building a business does not need to be violent. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. And it does require you to know yourself and you to have a very clear a vision of the life you want to live and the business that you want to have while giving yourself the grace to change your mind and to pivot. But you can have a soft life. I think honestly, soft life is a strategic life. Yeah, let me write that down. <laughs> soft life is a strategic life. Coming from a business strategist, a woman who, who works as, as uh, gets paid to figure out systems, to make things happen. Soft life is about being strategic. It's being strategic about your time, your resources, the things you feed, the things you breathe life into, the things that you don't, and how you take care of yourself during that process. Because look, uh, you can't be a mega amazing, national best-selling author, speaker, getting on stages with X, Y, and Z type of people and be burnt out like you can. <laughs> you need to be able to show up and give people the goods. And so whatever your business is, you have to be able to give the people the goods. Like you're the golden goose, you know what I'm saying? That's why I, I like to say that to my, my clients and some of my clients are like, no. But I'm like, you are, you're the golden goose. We gotta preserve you. And that's what soft life is about. It's about being strategic about how you operate and how you move so that as you move, you have multiple harvests. That's a soft life. I also have two episodes about building a business abroad that are great, I think. Build a business abroad part one, build a business abroad part two. Check those out on all of your listening platforms. And if you are ready to build a business abroad, I want to definitely encourage you to go ahead and download my Build a Business Abroad guide to get yourself clear about the type of business you wanna create. But more importantly, especially if you wanna take your business abroad, you need to really think about the global landscape and some of the things you may actually encounter. So making sure that that business is gonna be in alignment in all aspects of your life. And what you want to do is actually go on to my professional, well, I guess all my websites are professional, but my personal professional website, christinejob.com, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-J-O-B.com. You learn more about me. You can be like, okay, girl, but what do you really know? Ask about me and check out my website. <laughs> check out my website and you can learn more about me as a business strategist and what I do and who I work with and all their loveliness. And also you can join my newsletter there. So when the Build a Business Abroad group coaching is released, you'll hear about it. And remember, it is not about moving abroad, y'all. Goodness, don't let these TikTokers mess you up. <laughs> it's not about moving abroad. And it is for sure not about just being abroad on vibes, miserable, living the same life, having the same cycles occur in your life because you didn't resolve them, you didn't move around with, in, with intention. It's about thriving abroad. It's about living a life on your own terms. It's about, I don't know, soft life abroad? Yeah? Okay, so go abroad and cultivate a life well lived.
All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Flourish on the Foreign. If you haven't already followed me on IG, go ahead and do that at Flourish Foreign. What are you doing? You're missing out on a lot of interesting content. Go ahead and do that. And speaking of content, you may not know that Flourish on the Foreign not only has you know, a website with more information about the podcast, courses, but also a blog. Did you know that? With articles. And I have some guest blog posts coming down the pipeline that I know you all will very much enjoy, or at least I hope you will. So keep your eyes on the website. Make sure you're signed up for the Flourish and Foreign newsletter so that when the article drops, you'll be the first to know about it. You can go ahead and check it out. Let me know what you think. And of course, thanks to Zach Higgs for producing the music of this here podcast. Appreciate you, sir. Speaking of soft life and building business abroad, it is that time. It's time to get off the fence. If you are ready to build a business abroad, if you're ready to bet on yourself, really, right? Because sometimes saying you're going to build a business is just like, it can be daunting and scary. But if you're ready to bet on yourself and be in a community of other amazing people that are going to support you in building your business abroad, and you'll have access to me, Christine Joe, business strategist extraordinaire. <laughs> who's going to champion you and make sure you get right and get it together, then it's time. It's time for you to bet on yourself. Join me for Build a Business Abroad, this next cohort. It is an intimate cohort, which I like. I like coziness. I like people feeling heard. I like people feeling safe. And I like people feeling cared for. And I think that is what I bring to all of my clients, no matter if it's a group coaching or if it's one-on-one. I do bring that kind of touch to it because that's that's also part of me embodying soft life in my professional wellness. Personally, is being true to myself and who I am and how I like to personally work. So if you are ready, come on down. I'm ready for you. We're, we're ready to do this together. You can get more information about Build a Business Abroad at christinejobe.com. Also, there's a link in the description of this episode, so you don't even have to clickety-clack anything. Just click on the link. Also, I do have my masterclass from confusion and overwhelm and not in, in kind of insecurity as well to business clarity and idea. I'm just going to say, I'm really good at my job. <laughs> Like, I really am. I'm really good at my job. I'm really good at creating clarity. I'm really good at connecting the dots for people. And I'm really great at helping people leverage their skills. Like that's just, that's my gift and I'm the vessel for it. And I don't really claim ownership to it, but it's just what I've always been excellent at doing. So you'll definitely want to join me for this masterclass. Okay. If you miss it live, don't worry. You can always access it via christinejobe.com slash masterclass or the link in the description of this episode, okay? Remember, it is not about moving abroad. It is definitely not about just being abroad. It's about flourishing abroad. So go abroad and cultivate a life well lived. See y'all next time. Bye. On the next episode of Flourish in the Foreign. When I first got to Bali, my husband and I weren't really in love with it the way everyone else was because I think where we lived in Thailand, it was much more remote. There weren't as many foreigners. And so we just felt like we were really getting to experience Thailand in in an authentic way. 